This is Balaji for Goddess Talk and Afroganics. I'm about to get on for Goddess Talk radio in a second. Oh, I should probably put my mic on. I need my headphones. Let's go. I get a clap today. <laughs> hey everyone, good evening. It's Balaji for Goddess Talk. How y'all doing today? So our guest is on her way. Um, we have Dr. East, Dr. Carlia East um, from The Smile Psychology um, LLC. Sorry, let me make sure I say her uh, company name properly. So Dr. Carlia East is going to be here from Smile Psychology and Associates LLC. She's on her way. This is Tampa, a little bit of traffic, but she's on her way. So we are communicating via text message. But in the meantime, before she gets here, RJ's going to just be my co-host for now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. I'm just wow. like, all right, we're just going by. <laughs> but um, okay. today's topic today um, is childhood traumas. Oh, wow. Okay. Right? Um, I've been really wanting to talk about this for a minute. And uh, I just got on Facebook one day, and I just posted in general, like, yo, anybody know a psychiatrist, psychologist, um, therapist, especially black um, therapist, who could get on, you know, the radio and talk to me about childhood traumas that would really just, you know, be appreciated. Um, and the thing is that childhood traumas are an issue that I think a lot of us overlook, because everybody feels like they healed, but... Nine times out of ten, no, those um, those traumas still exist and still, you know, affect even you into your um, adolescent and then also well, when you're an adult. So, what do you? What's your take on the whole childhood traumas? Uh, take on childhood traumas. Mm-hmm. I definitely identify with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I have my own little situation, mm-hmm. and uh, I was adopted from birth. Mm-hmm. So, growing up, you know. It was interesting. Mm. Um, people always ask, "What's it like being adopted?" Mm. And I was like, "What's it like not being adopted?" You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what you're <laughs> like, like. That's my norm. You yeah, know? that's so, your reality. Yeah, not everybody else's. Yeah. And it was it was good. You know, mm-hmm. I had I was I was blessed to be adopted by parents that loved me a whole lot mm-hmm. and um, gave me a good opportunity in life. Um, so and then my first job out of college. Out of undergrad was uh, as a case manager for therapeutic foster care. Okay. Uh, so I was able to use my life experience to affect the lives of twelve boys, mm-hmm. and um, help them to make the transition towards permanent adoption and all that kind of stuff. So I mean, I, I definitely resonate with childhood traumas. Um, I'm not the type of person that like sort of stays in my stigma. Mm. You feel me? So it's like everything about it was. To what it was how to overcome it mm-hmm. you know don't carry it on my back put it in the backpack okay. seal it up oh you bag lady Keep it <laughs> bag man Keep it moving. so now the thing is because you did open it up um i was not adopted uh but it's a different perspective you know because like you said you had an opportunity because of the kind of parents that you have whereas yeah. Other people who have been adopted or fostered, they have negative experiences. Yeah. Um, do you feel like your parents and who they were, how they raised you, helped you to cope and even deal with your trauma? Uh, or just deal with that circumstance for you? Well, I remember, um, I, I could say my whole life has been a blessing, you mm-hmm. know. Um, like I said, I was... I was I, I, had a, I have a really good story. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... Uh, I can say early on in life, I remember realizing that I wasn't like the rest of the kids. Mm -hmm. My parents were 30 and 32 when they got me, Mm. you know. Um, So they was, they was young. They was, well, my age. I'm 31, so. Relatively. (laughs) (laughs) That's young. I'm not old. You 40. I'm hey, throwing your, I'm throwing your age out there, don't? Because you try to, you just try to, you just try to, ooh, you at me. me no water. You just killing me. No, you can stay parched over there. I don't oh, care. Oh man, <laughs> here, take, take, take the bottle. Oh Lord, she's throwing water at me. Whew, whatever. Hit me, Jesus. Listen, uh, yeah, I remember 
having a day, and I was like, I'm not like everybody else. I'm mm. going to find my folks, too. Okay. And it was because I was not able... To, a lot of my friends had younger parents. Okay. And so, um, because my parents are older, uh, and my dad's a preacher, it was like, if I want to go to the skating rink, I'm going with my friends go. Because mm. they're not going to get out here and skate with me. Yeah. If I Their parents go, might, but yours yeah. did. But, like, and I'm sitting here 30... You said your parents adopted you at 31, 32. Yeah. I'm still out there skating. You should see me with my little stroller. <laughs> it has been so long since I, I was skating. See you that, that was before we... <laughs> skating and stuff you be doing. It was so funny. It. That's wrong. I'll tell you, we had a great time that night. But 31, 32, like... I, I so, don't feel like that's old. Okay, so watch this. But at that time, if you're I guess thirty-one it was. or thirty-two, uh-huh. and you have a child, right? When the child turns eight or nine, mm-hmm. you are now pushing forty. Okay. Pushing forty, your brain thinks differently. Okay. Because when you're going to the fair, and you want to ride on <laughs> the rides at the fair, fair. <laughs> you never been to the fair. Never been to the fair. No, I didn't do a lot of stuff. So like that's Fun that would be cakes. my childhood trauma. I didn't cake have and candy apple and no like if we did like a field day at school, they might have did certain things, but I didn't really have a candy apple until just like a couple years ago, and I was mad as hell because I I didn't think it was a hard situation. So I like bit into. I was like, oh, well, for me, the candy <laughs> apple man. I never had it. Y'all, we got to take Velocity to the fair. That's going to be fun. No, this this that year, me and my friends were actually planning on doing it. Thing. We no, take Velocity to the fair for God's Me and my talk. friends were always trying to do, well, it's just because of me. I'm always trying to do, like, childlike stuff because I didn't feel like I had the, quote, unquote, you know, oh, regular man. childhood growing up. Yeah. Um, I'm the oldest of four, so it was just yeah, like, was mommy mode from yeah, baby. from jump. And, you know, we got to this country when I was seven. Sure. You know, we got into school, and I didn't feel like I really connected with the other kids, white sure. and black. Um, cause white folk hated me cause I was black and black folk hated me cause I was African and it's just like, but we all look alike, but whatever. So I didn't feel like I really enjoyed my childhood. Like I'm still like as an adult now, still like watching all my Disney. Yes, I got Disney plus. I'll tell you what I've been doing this past couple of weeks. I've been binge watching, uh, just all my old stuff from when I was a kid. Like yeah. I'm the biggest kid and most of my friends who know me, like so I'm the biggest kid. I do, and it helps me to, I think, just keep that childlike essence um, that I didn't feel like I had, Um, and it's just like, I feel like that makes me feel, you know, real good. Like, I don't feel my age at all. You ever watch this movie called Radio Flyer? No, what's that? We gotta do that. It's a movie Uh, that's about... There's so many, like, movies that I, like... I have never watched. Like, there's black movies that I have never watched. There's, like, regular... Nope. Do you know what I just watched <laughs> last year? And it was because somebody that I was um, talking to at the time. Uh, it was the movie with Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor. Um, like, Harlem Nights. Harlem Nights. That one I Never just watched it. just oh, within wow. the past year. Well, Life, me and my friends watched that during one of our Sunday fun days. Because I was like, I don't think I ever watched this well, movie. You know, it's, it's a thing because you're 30. Yeah, thirty one. You about to be thirty two. So you would have been a uh, like eighties, nineties baby. Almost. I'm an eighty eight baby. Wow. I am. You know what I was doing in eighty eight, man. I don't want to know you, nasty Sheesh. person. Listen, um, so look, uh, by you coming here when you came, did that make you feel like? Did you have a problem with identity? Not. A- I did because, and I still not that I struggle with it now anymore, mm-hmm. but it was an issue growing up because. Here, did I ever show you, like, what kind of um, garment we wore to church? The white. The white, right? Yeah. But then it was like, okay, but regular black churches, they wear whatever they want. Yeah. Or, you know, as long as you look good, you know, presentable. You know, but it was still a disconnect for me, I right? Grew up, I grew up around some friends of mine yeah. who wore red yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like, that's all they wore. Yeah, but if you was in Newark on Broad Street and wearing red, you got shot, but red was one of my favorite colors. <laughs> they didn't have she blood in Newark. Some crazy <laughs> but but like, I didn't grow up in Newark. Let me just say that. Our yeah. church was in Newark, okay? So I was there... I might as well have I, I might as well have grown up there because I was that church kid that went to church like four days out of the week, if not five, so if not Newark, all days. Newark is like Gunner City, right? Not Newark, Newark. 
I'm from North Carolina, so it's all gonna sound so different. So there's New Ark, like Delaware. I never heard of that. And then there's Newark, New Jersey. I've only heard of Newark, New Jersey. Okay, okay. so there's so that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Even though it sounds so twangy, <laughs> don't judge the twang, me. the twang. Listen, hey, Robin. <laughs> so, so you went to church in in Newark. In yeah. Newark, mm-hmm. am I saying it right? Newark. Yeah. All right. We got here when I was seven, so we had our church in uh, what is called Surulere, um, in well, actually in Lagos. I was born in Lagos, Nigeria, oh, yeah. right? And so our church there was um, there, and uh, it was called CNS Church Movement. Um, and I just felt very disconnected from just. I think we talked about that the whole yeah. church gospel, all that mm-hmm. stuff. Like I've always just been really ugh, about it. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I do have a code of ethics and all those things. You know, my parents did, you know, treat, raise us to, you know, be truthful, not steal, kill, all those things. You know, the basic golden rules. But you see, know? Hit my, so my question is this: mm-hmm. You grew up in Newark. I did not. I grew up in Willingboro, New Jersey. Grew We're up where? in Willingboro. Willingboro. That's on the outskirts. No, it's, it's South Jersey. South Jersey South. in the city. It's its own little community. It's but outside I mean, of Philly. It's out when, of Camden, think, New Jersey. It's okay. outside of, uh, well, my parents now live in Cherry Hill. But I grew up in Willingboro, New Jersey. Uh, we got here in 95. We moved into Willingboro because my family, my cousins and all of them were living there. So we moved there. Then we moved to Heistown, white area. Yeah. And then we moved back to Willingboro. And that's where I graduated from. 06. So I, I got a question. Mm-hmm. When you came here... Mm-hmm. Who did you identify with? You said you... I didn't identify with The reason I asked is because I do a lot of, um, like, campus ministry, mm-hmm. ministry and stuff at USF and UT. Mm-hmm. Uh, Caribbean African, population is a lot yeah. strong. African population is a lot strong. But there's a particular demographic of African students mm-hmm. who go to the University of Tampa mm-hmm. who do not identify. They don't want to be called black. Okay, and, and that's a problem. Yeah, it's right? a problem for and me. And I was just actually speaking with somebody about this this past weekend because... Mm-hmm. It's about how it's a, it's so in depth. Let me unbundle a couple things. You have the media that's taught us one thing overseas that black folk over here are this and that, right? Ratchet, and vice grimy, versa. You guys are thinking we're just you know famine, big bellies, and we got yeah. Simba as a pet, you know, pet dog, a pet lion kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so you got that, right? But then you have again colonization, which is white folk coming over there and China and everybody else who has literally raped everything um, and then put it into our heads. Then when you come over here, you get a visa or somehow you're able to come to this country. Um, you're told literally as you're walking across the border and everything, they're doing the meetings and everything. They're telling you to stay away from black folk. So but that they didn't tell happen. You to stay away from black people, but that when they see you. They're going to identify you as a black person. Absolutely. So that's why it's so so stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, we are one people, you know? So I was able to see through the lines and really, like, learn certain things. So I'll say that, and I tell people, I was like, no, like, my mom was colonized for a certain amount of time in my life, you know, because that was just the norm. That's what we were taught. Oh, you know, Americans don't do this, black... But it was like... But I think my annoyance with black people when I was a kid was because I wasn't received when I first came here because I didn't feel like number one the white people didn't want me and then it was like black people didn't want me either but it was like what happened where did you fit yeah and where did I fit at that time and I think what I did because that was traumatic to me now it it made me so that like literally I blend into all the groups like I all my friends for the most part are Nigerian or African, or Haitian, Jamaican. My best friend is Jamaican. Um, and then I have a whole bunch of my regular American friends. And everything I eat, they eat. Like, I'll be cooking for everybody. And we're always together. And there's no um, there's no disconnect, I feel. Because we'll be able to teach each other certain things. There's certain things I did not grow up doing. And they'll be telling me, I'm like, hold up. I really, like, me and my friend, especially Brittany. <laughs> I was like, Brittany, I really want you to know. I'm not trying to be offensive. But, like, why the hell did that happen? She was like, girl, <laughs> that's just some folk. And she'll explain it to me and so that I don't make an ignorant, you know, comment. Because I've made certain ignorant comments because I just did not know. Yeah. And the thing is, but I'm willing to accept when someone calls me out, like, yo, B, you're being real mean right now. Or you're being condescending. And I was like, all right, cool. I can appreciate that. And I'm not definitely not going to do that again. You dropped the eyebrow on them? 
oh yeah, the eyebrow gets raised, and I'm like, whoa. Because <laughs> certain things I can't get, she don't comprehend, nah, all that. All right, but, so, nah. Alright, so, so we're about to take our break. We're going to bust the break. We're going to bust the break, hey. bust the move, y'all. So, um, this is Guys Talk on In Touch News. We'll be right back uh, talking about childhood traumas tonight. Alright, see y'all soon. Yeah, we just... I did not connect with either side growing up, but then all of a sudden, it was just there. <clears throat> but, I mean, I'm so annoyed right. by this. Yo. Oh, I'm not going to say that on camera because y'all just know that um, I'm working very hard <laughs> to make sure everything goes very nice and smoothly in life. And uh, certain things just don't go as according to plan. But I'll talk about that off this air. This going to be the Balaji show. Nah, she's coming. It's I don't cool. know. Like, Either the thing way. is, um, especially with traffic, if I can't. That's why I do leave very, very, yeah, very early. super early. Yeah, always because always. my anxiety, I can't take, I can't do. Punctuality is a thing for me. Like, one thing to irk me to my soul. Your whole me. soul, man? My whole soul gets <laughs> jacked up. I'm about to say something else, but you know what I mean. So do you identify with CPT? No. And I don't identify with Nigerian time either. There's a Nigerian <laughs> time, which is way worse than colored people time. Why? Yo, it's so disrespectful. So, <laughs> I think I have to find the, the meme, actually. But there was, uh, if, if you ever go to a Nigerian wedding, do not right. show up at the time that they have established on the thing. Show up super late. Like, you got to give yourself a good three plus hours. Later? After that time. So now my wedding though, don't play that because that's just not it. Like that's, my parents will get left. But that's you though. But that's, that's like me. You. But but this is the thing. So I guess somebody must have invited their friend to the Nigeria wedding. So that's I guess they took pictures. <laughs> they took a picture, and I was like, oh, they don't like him. They didn't tell him the the, the code. You don't show up on time. <laughs> Am I on? Yeah. Hey y'all. <laughs> <laughs> This is Goddess Talk with Balaji, um, beautiful Thursday here in Tampa, Florida. Um, wherever you're calling or listening from, yeah, y'all should call us anyway. 813-444-9588. If I'm talking too fast, let me it's know. It's on the screen. It's on they the screen. It on Facebook. It's on the screen. Hey, Dr. Kentaya Bueller. Woo -woo. How you doing? <laughs> but today we're talking about childhood traumas, right? So before we got off the air for the break, um, we were talking about, I guess, more so my side and what I had to deal with coming to this country at a young age, not feeling like I was accepted by, you know, number one, my peers uh, of melanated people, but then at the same time, I was ostracized by white folk. Well, ostracized doesn't mean I was ever included, so, but I wasn't part of their group either. Um, I actually had a mother, I don't know what it was, I was seven when we got here, okay, so I was pretty young. I was a baby, technically, and she just told me not to play with her child, and it was just like, what? Who was this? A mother. A white mother. A white mother, mother yeah. said this to me at like seven or eight. I don't remember how old I was, you know? So, about the same time. Yeah. Not the same time, but, you know. At that my, year. My eight. Yeah. My nine. Mm hmm uh, Fourth grade, I went to school, and that's about the time uh, when you take the test. Mm -hmm. You take the test here, where I'm from. We took the test in third grade. Mm -hmm. And they separated us between the special gifted kids and yep. the non-special gifted mm -hmm. kids and the almost special gifted kids yeah. and IQ testing. And so the next year mm -hmm. is like child trauma because I'm in the classroom with all these white kids. They're coming smart. to school in a black community, <laughs> uh -huh. right? My friend, we go to school together, mm -hmm. but they go on the right side of the hallway uh -huh. and I go on the left side well, of the hallway. You're in North Carolina, so this, this definitely it's sounds about right. some whole yeah, different stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so my childhood trauma was uh, being in class and the lady calls me Rod. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Rod, hmm, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Nickname, mm -hmm. you know, because my full name is Roderick. Mm -hmm. Don't play me. Uh, very and you sex. corrected me because I said Roderick. Yeah, you said I, Roderick. And that's why I go with RJ. Okay, Roderick. I just got to remember the er part. It's Roderick, like Roderick, Roderick Derek, uh -huh. Rodney, Derek, all the, Ron, all right. Ronald, Richard. All right, Roderick. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> yeah, so all it's right. like I got tired of people messing up my name mm -hmm. over time because mm -hmm. it's unique. Mm -hmm. And when you have a, your name is Balaji. And Look, if somebody calls day. you something crazy, you'd be like, every day. Why are you trying to? 
And that's the thing. Like, so if I you don't know. Just ask me how to say. I it won't even respond together. to you. Like it's Balaji. So I went to school, and it's, I'll never forget her name was Miss Manning. Mm. No, Miss Musgrave. Musgrave. That's okay, we, I know a Musgrove. No, this is Musgrave. Hey, Miss Jerry okay. and Mister. My father's a farmer. Um, David and. So Miss Musgrave yeah. calls me Rod. And so she starts writing Rod, mm -hmm. and then the whole class, all they know me as is Rod. Okay. And so we get to parent teacher conference. Mm -hmm. My dad, preacher daddy, my mom, <laughs> <Come through. laughs> first lady, mm -hmm. and little RJ, well, Roderick at mm -hmm. the time. We go to school. Mm -hmm. We go to the school, get in the classroom. Oh, Rod's such a good child. And my dad was like, Who is Rod? Rod? <laughs> She's like, Rod, Roderick. He's oh, like, Okay. Daddy pop off like, who told you to rename my child? Okay, you gonna do this next right here. Hey, Dr. Car <laughs> Dr. East. Thank you so much. Are you here? This yeah. is In Touch Radio. This is In Touch, very live Radio right now. Radio, <laughs> where everyone is a star. <laughs> this is Sweet What? Sweet What? 15. Sweet 15. The first, come through one five. Line, first, first door on the left. Okay, one five. Yeah. The door's unlocked. This this her guest, y'all. <laughs> don't don't do that to me. And Lord, don't do that to my guest. But it ain't true. I will man. fight you. you by my guest so I can play. See? That's why nobody played with you as a child. You just mean. Okay. If that's how you would like to you say take your childhood trauma out on me when you get in the studio. I don't appreciate it. I try to be as nice as a I try to get the <laughs> sound effects and all Lord. that kind of craziness. <laughs> how you doing? I'm good. Don't how listen to him. him. No, listen to me. Don't listen I'm to him. The truth. How you doing? Look. I'm good, y'all. Jesus. Oh, I'm so that's sorry. Look, no worries. Balaji was not that excited before you came in here. Listen, so that says that her energy hyped me up because yours was dragging me. me. I call so, myself you know, being so um, on time today. It's all good. And... I always said, leave. No. Nah, that's I told. Him, I was like, I have bad anxiety about like punctuality. I have to <sighs> leave my house like damn near an hour early so I, like I could get to wherever my destination is and I could just chill. <laughs> and I'm yeah, good. I, I literally told don't my rush client, me. Like um, we. Mm, mm, yeah. And I never do that. Yeah. And I was like, mm, I gotta got go. To. I gotta go. Gotta right, so, so Doctor. Carlia East yes. is in the building, y'all. In the building. For Smile Psychology and Associates mm -hmm. LLC. So, yeah. Dr. Carlia East. Or, do I call you Dr. East? I just always... I see Dr. Carlia on your Facebook, but I always Dr. call, I call you... I think I called you Carlia when I first met you because that's how you introduced yourself. Yeah, that's But fine. just tell us about you first. You are a St. Pete native. Yes, born go, and raised. Go ahead and tell us about St. Pete because every time somebody from St. Pete come, I get so excited because... I really swear that people really do vibe with me in St. Pete. So come on, what's yes, going on? Yes, born and raised in St. Pete. Mm -hmm. um, mother and father born and raised here. Been been there all my life, okay. and um, stepped away just a little bit to go to UCF to get my um, my bachelor's degree, and then that's mm -hmm. UCF is what UCF? University of Central Florida. Oh, that's in Central Atlanta. Florida. Okay, yeah. I was just there a couple weeks ago, actually. Yeah, yeah yes. went there before it was all hip, mm -hmm. and <laughs> you know, before it was all tech. <laughs> I got my bachelor's mm -hmm. and then went to Argosy University for my master's okay. and then Capella University for my PhD. And I was in Capella. I dropped out this past year. I just couldn't do it anymore. That's but you just took a pause. You know? <laughs> I was four years in. Aww. I was tired. I was like, I'm dead. It will wear you out. I tell people all the time, you don't you don't go to school to have fun at yeah, some nah, point you go to school because nah. it's the next stepping stone yeah to what you need to do yeah and if you think of it that way you're like okay this class is just the next step yeah so i need to do but um once i graduated with my my doctorate degree i knew that i wanted to serve my community mm -hmm. which was something that was very vital and important to me okay many of the people that i went to high school and college with kind of like migrated to chocolate city yeah um, which I Atlanta, can tell totally, yeah, and all those other DC places, yeah. and Philly, yes. Chicago, DMV, all that, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And I get that, mm -hmm. but I'm very close with my my family, mm -hmm. my mom and dad, and um, this is the community that helped me get to where I was. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, it just didn't feel right to not me. to stay okay. and provide. Now, okay. staying has had its challenges. Don't get it twisted. I'm sure we'll get into okay. it. Okay, we'll get into it. Challenges. Okay. But um, I wouldn't change that for the world. Okay, so now um, tell us about Smile. How did okay. you get to Smile? All right, so Smile Ooh. literally um, is an acronym for solving and managing issues with love and enrichment. Mm. 
and solving and, and managing, managing issues with love and enrichment. Yes. I remember that. Yes. I like that. Dope. And the other caveat to it is that um, you leave my office with a smile. Okay. And that's real. Mm-hmm. Um, with Smile, it originally started as Smile Counseling Services. Okay. You know, when I first got, it, got started, mm-hmm. I was doing contract work and... You know, eventually I worked up my, myself into a group practice, yes. and then I said, you know what, I'm paying these folk what I could be paying for my own little space. Mm-hmm. So I started out at Smile Counseling Services, okay. which was just me in a 100 square foot office doing my thing. Whoever came in, you took right. care of them. Yeah. Exactly. And then the mission kind of came for me to grow, mm-hmm. and I received my messages from up above, mm-hmm. and so when I get them, I try to act on them, mm-hmm. you know, as much as possible, and so I was blessed enough to be able to find a space where now I have five contractors that work under me. Mm. We just brought on, um, we just became a licensed massage establishment. So now we offer massage therapy as part of the services that we provide. Smile is now Smile Psychology and Associates because I want people to understand that you're not just coming here for therapy. We offer a very holistic approach Mm -hmm. at my practice, which I think is so vital. I love the fact that so many of us are going back to really the holistic side of things. Yes. Like, it's so beautiful. I've met so many people. It's all holistic, everything they do. Yes. Yes. And oftentimes, you know, what I find is that people come in the door with a very um, misconstrued example of what they think psychotherapy Mm -hmm. is and what they think counseling is Mm -hmm. and what they think a psychologist Mm -hmm. is. And they tend to think that we're just going to judge and try to push them on meds and those types of things. And that's really not what we're here for. Mm -hmm. You know, my job is to listen to you, but also to give it to you straight. Mm -hmm. And that's what separates Smile from other practices. Mm -hmm. We are no nonsense. We don't play about nothing in our practice. We give it to you straight and honest. Why? Because you're there to find a piece of healing. Mm -hmm. And my job is not to prolong your process. Mm -hmm. My job is to help push you forward so that you can be successful. Mm. I loved it. So, <laughs> now the topic, when I posted the thing on Facebook uh, about childhood trauma, right? you you got us like, yo, I can help you with that. I was like, yo, yes. this is perfect. Because I do repost so much stuff sometimes, I really forget all the time what everybody does. And I was just so excited that you said yes, for sure, that you would be here. So, explain to us what truly is childhood trauma. Because okay. there's some people who have a romanticized thing about it. Like, oh, you know, my parents didn't love me. And so, forever, I'm just an effed up person. But it's right. like, there's nuances to it. There are. Yeah. Because, I mean, let's face it. At some point, if it was just that simple, you got an adult. Mm-hmm. You know, you just can't keep blaming your mom and dad for your situation yes. for the rest of your life. Yes. But, childhood trauma really deals with, initially, okay, so... Eric Erickson talked about the fact that um, there's trust versus mistrust Mm -hmm. within the first two years, you know, first year of a child's Mm -hmm. life. Basically, what he's saying is that when that child does not have a parent or a caregiver Mm -hmm. to provide them with stability and trust, whether it's um, just, you know, being very abusive Mm -hmm. to them, whether it's, uh, you know, verbal, emotional, physical, sexual, you know, all these Mm -hmm. different things, whether it's um, neglect Mm -hmm. of some particular type then that child learns to mistrust. Mm. When you think about children, you got, we know that children are sponges yeah. and that they soak up everything. everything yeah. But what I try to get people to understand is just like we know that hate is taught, mm. love is taught yes. as well. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. if your mother or father never told you that they loved you and also never showed it, mm. you know, because there's verbal and there's physical yeah. ways of showing mm-hmm. love, Not verbal. then how do you know what love is? Mm. How do you know how to love properly? Mm-hmm. You know, all you know is what you know. Mm. And so if a child is grown, is kind of raised and reared in that type of environment, they really don't have a solid baseline of what love is. So they don't have anything to refer to. And that's security for that child. Exactly. And I was just talking to a friend of mine today that sometimes when we feel insecure about certain things is because it really does trace back to you know, our childhood it was like, does. okay, like, if you really didn't hear somebody say they love you all the time, and then somebody keeps saying, it's like, why do you keep saying this? Like, right. I got it. <laughs> right. And there's a ton of, yeah. like, unconscious things that yeah. happen to us that we absorb as children. Mm-hmm. So when you look at between the ages of, like, one and three, that's when the brain is usually formating to the largest size. About 75% of the brain mm-hmm. size mm-hmm. happens, or growth, okay. happens between the ages of one and three, which is why those are those formative years mm-hmm of putting those, you know, baseline moral codes and standards and whatever your belief system Mm -hmm. is, it's important to put that there because after that, that other, like maybe 10% um, or 15% goes on to age seven. Mm. 
So pretty much the child's brain is pretty much formulated. Yeah. You know, and so it's really important to be mindful that the that brain is forming itself and growing based upon the experiences that it's having. Okay. So if those experiences are negative or, or neglect, that because your un- becomes your unconscious process of how you view the world mm. and ultimately how you view yourself. Mm-hmm. So self concept is key in childhood trauma as well. Okay. So we're about to take our next break. But you gave me a lot to think because now I got some questions, all right? Because <laughs> okay. I'm thinking of adolescent trauma because you might have a great childhood and then something happens in your yes. adolescent that contradicts that and you just... Yes. But this is In Touch News. This is Goddess Talk. We'll be right back in a second, all right? See y'all soon. Where's my theme music? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, by the way. <laughs> RJ. <laughs> I do nice to meet you. RJ, RJ, RJ. Ooh, I'm trying to put my, uh, my crystal in my You city. got yours too? I got my crystal in the city. Cause, no. um, I have to wear mine at all times. I, got I need Malachi. to pull it out today, honey. Cause I, was, I haven't been blessed with the crystal yet. I don't know where to get you one. You want one? I don't know where to get one. I don't you know, know what, what you I don't, I don't, I don't trust like. the Logic statement mean. that he's making. No, I know what he's right making. Now. I know what he's saying. I just ignore him. Do I'm like, do you want one? I'll pull it out of my bra. It'd <laughs> be nice and warm. Mine is warm, too. <laughs> I'm just the saying. The T.E.C. The Logic's going to give me some crystal that's like... Break your neck when you walk down the street. No, they're something. never like that. I'm unless that's your some, intention. Um, I'm gonna grab me some tourmaline in a in a couple of weeks because I need to keep this evilness off of me. Look, I'm telling you, I really and um, there's this black owned uh, sh- uh, crystal shop seconds. here in uh, Tampa, Chakra Zoo, and you can always order online okay. too. But I just got a couple things because I was like, yo, anxiety, a couple mm-hmm. things like Chakra. Zulu. I'm always like, on the move. Chakra Zulu. She's a sweet, sweet person. Okay. I just met her a couple weeks ago. Let me check her out. Yeah. We back. Hey, y'all. This is Goddess Talk with Balaji on In Touch News. If you want to call in and have any questions for Dr. East, 813-444-9588. So, before we left, um, I just... Something we were talking about just made me think about childhood versus almost adolescent, you mm-hmm. know, um, trauma. Mm-hmm. Because you mentioned that during the ages of one to three, if the parents are very loving, that child, that's that's their unconscious um, their thought, baseline. memory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, maybe something shifts within the family right. dynamic or right. environment. And then now during their adolescent or later, you know, childhood, mm-hmm. things change. Mm-hmm. Doesn't that cause a conflict with the person? Because it's like... I knew love, but then now I don't know it and I'm mistrusting of it, but it's like, but I know love, like, I feel right. like that's my issue. So. Well, it causes, <laughs> I mean, when you think about adolescence, it's mm-hmm. that period of hormonal release, mm. you know, that we all get. So men get that extra taste of testosterone, women get that extra estrogen, estrogen, estrogen. Yeah. and when that happens, the brain changes the way that it shifts, mm. because we also are not entering our hormone that is responsible for our sex drive, mm-hmm. and our libido. Yeah. And so that plays a role in how we visualize ourselves and how we visualize others mm-hmm. and so when there's a trauma that happens at that point mm-hmm. there's so many domino effects yeah. that are taking place at that particular time that a person does become kind of um, imbalanced yeah. in the way that they view themselves like they know they had a good childhood yeah. but yet they don't know why they're very clingy yeah. or why they're very angry or all the time detached. Right, right. or why they isolate yeah. and usually it's because they haven't Um, I would say progressed well through Mm -hmm. that stage of adolescence, which is so pivotal. Mm -hmm. It's like you got that first one to three, which is pivotal for setting the baseline Mm -hmm. of the personality. And then you have that adolescence that really kind of um, perpetuates our motions of reaching higher and Mm -hmm. setting goals and being confident in ourselves. And that if we don't successfully go through that particular Mm -hmm. developmental stage, there's a trauma that happens in that particular stage it can totally stop your ability to progress, Mm. which is why we sometimes have individuals that are 40 years old, but they got like, you know, 12 year old issues. Mm. You know what I mean? Because they've kind of skipped that adolescence phase because of the trauma. They can always go back to that childlike state when something happens. Exactly. And I was talking to a friend of mine. I was like, yo, when something really does happen, I feel like a little kid again. Yeah. And it takes me right back to it because shadow work, I don't know how you deal with mm-hmm. that part within your um, therapy, but have you talked about shadow work before? We've done a little bit of it. It's not something that we specialize mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. Um, we do a lot of uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of uh, uh, rational emotive behavior therapy, but mainly trauma-focused, mm-hmm. um, issue-focused, and we do a lot of mimicking and reframing, okay. which I think is important. Okay, because so explain that. So mimicking and reframing is kind of like shadowing on mm-hmm. a, a, a slight different scale 
where we 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 role play mm-hmm. a situation okay. with the person where they kind of are able to act as a third party but yes. they're working through their trauma yes. as a third party I have heard about which that, is yes. a safe space mm-hmm. for people sometimes mm-hmm. to do that because it's very hard to say I was molested or I wasn't loved mm-hmm. or I was hit you know but she or mm-hmm. he or they yeah. is easier to do to talk about and the point way. of trauma is to me the way I think mm-hmm. it's not all about you sitting up and saying, okay, I was treated this way. It's about you just addressing it in general Mm -hmm. and having a concept and idea that wrong was done. Okay. Once you understand that wrong was done and you understand that that can be not necessarily replaced, but you can reframe to find survival Mm -hmm. and resilience in that wrong that was done. That's what I try to do with the reframing. Okay. Is get the person to see, look, you did not, you were not just traumatized and stayed traumatized. Mm -hmm. Like, you're here. Yeah. Like, you're living, you're breathing, like your life matters. Yeah. And helping them to understand that even through that darkness, those cracks is where the light shines, mm-hmm. you can still find your way through. Mm-hmm. And that's so important. <clears throat> and I try to also instill um, in clients that are dealing with any type of trauma mm-hmm. that it's one thing to survive, which I think is important, but we have to thrive. Mm-hmm. You know, After many of effect, us survive yeah. and we say... I'm good. You know, you ask the person, how you doing? I'm good. You know, I'm making it day to day. (laughs) That's my MO. I'm chilling, man. Right. Everybody's like, why are you always saying? I was like, because I am. Right. (laughs) And some individuals who live in that state, they really are living day to day Mm -hmm. or week to week. Mm -hmm. And the goal at Smile is to get you to live, you know, quarter to quarter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? By year year, to by year. You know, to get you think further. That's Mm -hmm. that thriving. Mm -hmm. Surviving is saying, okay, I went through something, I made it out. I'm here. Mm-hmm. Thriving is I went through something, I made it out, now I'm turning that pain into purpose to yeah, push me yeah. to the next level. Okay. So it, it's really a transition. No, absolutely. I totally understand what you're saying. So now because everything I do with God is talk comes back to our community. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, the tra- the traumas that we dealt with from slavery because we could right. go with Dr. Joy DeGru- DeGroy, you know, post-traumatic slave syndrome mm-hmm. and talk about how we still as a people are still literally living with PTSD from that era. Um, absolutely. Yes. Because we're still dealing with colorism. Yes. You know, we're still dealing with, I mean, let's face it, the haves and the have-nots and access. Bourgeoisie and, and all that exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah, all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Right. laughs> all that stuff. I told everybody my my gala come. I was like, yeah, it's just a bougie black situation for everybody. For, for everybody. everybody. For all of us. <laughs> just to let but y'all know. But it's the know. truth. We, yeah. we really, really are, you know, um, When you look at uh, Roe versus the Board of Education when Mm -hmm. they did the doll study, you know, I show video footage of of that study as Mm -hmm. well as video footage of um, the recent one that Anderson Cooper did Mm -hmm. at a at a school in like I think it was like two thousand and like eleven. Yeah. And the results were still the same. same. There is a bias towards whiteness even for our you know, for our children. Yes. And you have to think that it has a lot to do with the sensory information they're receiving mm-hmm. on a daily basis. It's cartoons they're watching, right. music, you right. know, from the videos and everything. Right. And, and we like, know social that. media is huge at perpetuating the bull, yeah. you know, and kind of painting a picture of negativity mm-hmm. depending on the subset of the culture. Yes. And we see children are still buying into that. Mm-hmm. There was a, a young black girl and the guy asked her, you know, which color do you think? Um, a teacher doesn't want on a child and she pointed to the darkest shade and she said dark Mm. and he said well why she's like well sometimes I think my skin looks ugly for some reason Mm. but I don't know what reason you know and it's like to have a child in elementary school know that that she's being that she's beautiful Mm -hmm. but that to others she's ugly or that she's not attractive that that sets the psyche and that starts the trauma process okay RJ what you say so I've had um Prior to moving to Tampa, I lived in Arkansas. Okay. Whole different kind of experience. Mm. Um, and we were having a conversation that pretty much went like this. Uh, one of the um, older community persons said, prior to uh, integration, mm-hmm. we were fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We I were agree. better off <clears throat> because our kids saw strong examples of us mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. had our own schools. We had our own stores, neighborhoods. Right. We had our stores. own stores. Right. We knew how to take care of each other. Mm-hmm. When the railroad track was crossed, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's when we started having issues with identity as a community. Mm-hmm. Because even now, uh, black kids don't always live like their parents live the American dream, mm-hmm. which is to get out of the hood 
move out to the suburbs, mm-hmm. live behind the gate, mm-hmm. and you're the only black person on your street. Mm-hmm. And you're excited about the fact that they let you live out there. Mm-hmm. But your your kids are also growing up thinking that they're just like Buffy and Zach. Mm-hmm. And they're not. <laughs> Buffy and Zach. And as long as they're at school, Buffy and Zach are cool with them. Mm-hmm. Right? But they're never going to invite them over for sleepover. But or Shikoy they Koy will, but then something the goes missing. Right. Shoot. They ain't coming to the birthday party. Mm. You know, and, and it's like a false reality of mm. I fit and I belong. Mm. But at the same extent, you're different. Mm. And it, it always works out in our children in the worst ways. Mm. Because I remember um, my kid, when she was in like the, the fifth grade, mm. they didn't want her to know that she was black. Like they didn't want the kids to refer to each other as the black girl yeah. or the white girl. Right. They wanted I them don't to see know, color. I don't see color. Right. But when your child realizes that they're black, right, that, that can child be trauma. <laughs> yes, for <laughs> sure. No, it is. Because yeah. now I recognize that, you know, Buffy's mom doesn't want me to ride in her car. Right. Or it might be your, your um, when you have to deal with a police officer, you might have gone through your whole life. I'm telling you, there are some people who never dealt with any racism any mm-hmm. colorism. I mean, like, for real, friends of mine. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't mm-hmm. until they had something literally smacked them Mm -hmm. in the face that Mm -hmm. was like I didn't know because my parents had money we went to all the best this I was treated like this I went to all their friends all their white friends they all went to all the socials together they were always at each other's houses they never had an issue until there was some kind of interaction with one person who truly just despised people of color Mm -hmm. especially and that was when it smacked them in the face and it's like whoa my identity is a question now. Right. Well, I had an experience as a firefighter, mm. you know, as a professional firefighter in a city, and the volunteer boy got hired to be on the fire department. Mm. You know, only white people volunteer. Mm. That's the generalized statement, but it's pretty true. Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, and they live their lives hoping that one day they'll get hired onto a paid yeah. department. Okay. <clears throat> so he goes to the paid department. He doesn't understand the stoplight. Mm. Because he's grown up driving tractors on the farm. Okay. His name is John Rodney. Big, bruisey white boy. Mm-hmm. With a, I mean, I got a southern accent, but this dude's accent is like, his accent is southern. That's that, 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 that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, OP. That's that, 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 that all he talk that I can't. But ever he, he had never been yeah. engaged right. with black people. Like, it's like, just person yeah. and that's one wow. I've had people so to address what you were saying mm-hmm. that's that's one of the things that's so so important it needs to be on both sides what I find is that you know individuals are less likely to have a conversation about um, a special population mm-hmm. when it's not affecting them adversely yes. right and so if you've never um, if you don't have a, a member in your family that's part of the LGBTQ mm-hmm. community, you're less likely to have a conversation about acceptance mm-hmm. and inclusivity. Yeah. You know, if you are a Caucasian person who lives in a cul-de-sac, which you're allowed to, mm-hmm. and that's your neighborhood, mm-hmm. you're less likely to have a conversation about race mm-hmm. with your white child with because you, you don't necessarily face those you know particular mm-hmm. things. Now, to piggyback on what you were saying, um, I am one of those those people that you were talking about that I grew up in. You know. Um, St. Pete, living middle, lower to middle class. Mm-hmm. Um, my husband and I got married, decided to make a family. We wanted to build a house. Mm-hmm. And we literally built over in Parish, mm-hmm. Florida, mm-hmm. because we got more bang for our buck. It's mm-hmm. about the coin. Yeah. You know what I mean? And But we are in a very rural mm-hmm. you know, neighborhood. Yeah. It's like cows and coyotes and stuff. And predominantly uh, white. Yeah. So we make an effort, a conscious effort, to first of all, involve our child with all spectrums of activities. Mm -hmm. When we picked his preschool, Mm -hmm. his pre-K, I picked one specifically because they had an array Mm -hmm. of children in the school. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is where we live, you know, but life happens in these streets Mm -hmm. and you need to be able to survive these streets. And so there's several conversations I've had with my son, like I brought him the book Chocolate Meat Mm -hmm. so that he can understand you know that he's chocolate and he's sweet mm-hmm. and he's beautiful. Yeah. And I guarantee, and, I, and this was the the craziest thing. I bought him this book. He loved it. We read it every night. About two weeks later, he goes to school, and one of his kids, Caden, mm-hmm. Caden mm-hmm. <laughs> said, "Why your hat?" You know, Caden pulled his hair because my son has really curly, curly mm-hmm. hair. And Caden pulled his hair, and he's like, "Why is your hair like that?" And and so my son said, "My hair's like that because I'm chocolate. Hey, and chocolate is sweet." <laughs> And I was like, that's right. 
But you know what? So proud, proud mm-hmm. parent moment. But then it was also sad. Yeah. Because why did he imagine have to if like that, yeah. he didn't have hashtag woke mm. parents to make sure that he was aware of his beauty, to make sure that he was aware of his um, his opportunity to have access that is not everybody's opportunity to have. So I think those types of conversations mm-hmm. we need to always have with our kids because we're not preparing <clears throat> them like we should. We talk to them about their virginity. We talk to them about, you know, guns and this and that, but we do not talk to them about colorism and race and how to respond to a situation when it strikes them. Okay, so we're about to take a break. See, this thing be going Sorry. fast. No, 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 <laughs> but I we're going to come back. So this is got us talk on In Touch. You want to call in 813-444-9588. We'll be right back. So now, now we still got the live with um, the regular people. That's okay. just for news breaks and stuff. Hey, regular people. Hey, regular people. You know Kentaya, right? <laughs> of course I do. Yeah, Kentaya. so also Capella. <laughs> Capella lady. What's up? What up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, dang. If, because I feel like our parents, my parents, and mm-hmm. um, the generation, the baby boomers and everybody else, they were trying to, I won't say hide the true trauma that had really happened Mm -hmm. from us. Mm -hmm. So that's why they wanted us to integrate, I feel Mm -hmm. like, and just Mm -hmm. to really just have an easy way in. Mm -hmm. But they didn't realize that it actually hurt us at the same time. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, but it did hurt us. But now, like you said, hashtag well, parents, you're going out of your way to truly, you know, groom your child. Mm -hmm. Really tell him how beautiful he is. Mm -hmm. Not saying that, you know, they're ugly. No, 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 no. It's like, but you are so beautiful. You are so precious. You are so this. Right. And don't let nobody tell you any different. Right. Where I feel like, you know, the other generation is like, oh, well, you know, just ignore them or, you know, tell the teacher. Right. No. No. You let them to, know. You have to give children a reference point. Yes. You just, it's like when our parents say it, because I said so. Yeah. We were like, I mean, we were scared. Yeah. So we said, okay. okay. Like, we didn't, we didn't yeah. argue with it, but we didn't learn a damn thing from yeah. because I said so. I think it made us really do- docile or docile, whichever way you want to Yeah. Know, docile. There's yeah. a difference between... Like, integration <laughs> never happened because integration means that there was a mix. Yeah, there was right. Never. It was more like assimilation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, right. And, well, and a lot of us MLK adults said, right? decided to assimilate. <laughs> Bless you. Thank and you. because we assimilated, yeah. it did something different to our kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It made a standard for our kids that said, "Be more like them." Yeah. Right. You 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 gotta talk like them. You gotta oh, right. dress like, like them. them. You gotta act like them. Now, you got the same you degrees gotta be they like got, them, but you got to be ten times better than they are mm-hmm. at being like they are. Mm, and right. it's like, huh? What you mean? Right. Instead of us right. just being us, who mean? we were, where we were thriving. I totally agree that we were thriving before. I think we're thriving before colonization and everything else. If we want to talk about One, who really two seconds. Oh, two seconds. That's how we do. <laughs> hey y'all, this is Balaji with Goddess Talk. We are back with Dr. Carlia East of the Smile. Psychology and Associates LLC. How are you doing, Dr. East? I am great. It's wonderful to have you here. So before the break, um, we were talking about a, a slew of things, you know, but I really wanted to go back to the fact that um, it really does take uh, parents, honestly, mm-hmm. to put in their child um, how beautiful they are, yes. not just their skin. You have a variety of uh, chocolates, you know yes. what I'm saying? You got dark chocolate, you got you got, Caramel, you got everything. Mochiato. You know? <laughs> and I think, you know, those traumas do start at home sometimes mm-hmm. because when you think about some people say light skin privilege. Yes. And that mm-hmm. is very true. Oh, yeah. But then there's also sometimes dark skin privilege, you know, because it's like we I feel like being a you know, I feel like I am dark skin. Nobody can argue that with me. Because <laughs> maybe when I got to this country, I was made to feel like Dark as hell. I feel you. You know? Mm-hmm. Bye, Mr. Light Skin. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he ain't high yellow. Ain't high right? yellow. <laughs> you know, this is stuff that we be doing, and it's like, right. but it really does hurt people, right? Because it's like, I feel like there are privileges that both will yeah. have at different times. Yes. And some people may not recognize it. Right. But I think most people, even if something is brought to you, do not discount that other person's uh, way of feeling. Mm-hmm. Because when you discount people, it really just exacerbates the situation. Right. I feel that's just me. Right. And my thing is you, you don't know a person's journey. Mm. You really don't know. You don't, they may come to you today and with, with a type of facade that you're not really feeling, mm. but you don't really understand what's behind that facade. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think it's really important to give people um, 
the same benefit that you would want mm. given to yourself. yourself. Yeah. You know, that you would want given to yourself. And if I can segue mm. just a little bit, yeah. I just want to talk about the fact of us and going to therapy. Mm. That was going to be, I was like, what? what is your thing for <laughs> us as a people? So let's go into that. That would be our, our thing for the night, for sure. I, you know, my thing is, I feel like there has been, um, historically, mm-hmm. right, when we look at, you know, racism and when we look at um, slavery and, and those things, we were taught to go to the church. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the place that we were taught to go. That was our safe haven. Mm-hmm. It definitely was for us at a time when no other place was really safe that for was us. Because we were allowed to go. Exactly. To you know, and because of all the disparaging things that were going on, we were taught to keep things close knit, mm-hmm. to keep things in house mm-hmm. because you could not trust them, yeah. the they's, the them's. You know, and I get all of that. They'll take your child, they'll take this, they'll take yeah. Right. But what kills me is last time I looked in the mirror, I'm chocolate. Mm-hmm. And I'm right here. Mm-hmm. And yet we still have individuals, you know, afraid to speak. I think for one thing, we have um, black males are, 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 are having a hard time mm. opening up because it is a sign yeah. of weakness for them. Supposedly, you know, yeah. right. It's a sign of weakness for them. It's a sign of, um, you know, them feeling like they can't take care of their business. Yeah. Like they can't, you know, hold up, you know, this yeah. bravado sometimes that they have. And what they need to understand is the reason why we are... I'm just going to be frank about it. Mm-hmm. The reason why we're behind the lines is because the days are going and getting therapy. The days is going and working through and they talk the issues the that they're, they're having there. and working through it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, per, I my cl- clientele now is mixed, mm-hmm. but when I first started out, it was all Caucasian. Mm-hmm. And I got a problem with that because mm-hmm. the money was still green. Love. So I was <laughs> that was fine. As long as but, I would be remiss if I didn't say that I didn't want to turn to my community, mm-hmm. you know, and provide help. What I'm finding now is that a lot of young African-American women are coming in for therapy. Mm-hmm. They are more aware of themselves. They're more aware of their holistic process, mm-hmm. you know, making sure that their minds are right. Yeah. They understand that they need to balance yeah. that stress yeah. so they can be successful. And so I do see that more often. Mm-hmm. But we have to realize that therapists like myself only make up maybe 13 to 14% of the United States of America. Mm-hmm. And you got one of these percentages right here in your backyard that is willing and able and capable of providing you with relief helping you let go Um. helping you bury Mm -hmm. helping you close the doors on things that you are you're a bag lady you're a bad guy you're still carrying around this baggage with Mm -hmm. you every single day Mm -hmm. but ain't nobody coming to get that baggage off your back pack light (laughs) so but before you jump on have you seen that you are a black uh, psychotherapist, mm-hmm. right? And people would rather go to the others than to you. What I'm gonna tell you what I've seen. Mm-hmm. I've seen that my folk mm-hmm. need them to approve me. Yeah. Before they approve me. Mm. And I and I didn't think it was gonna be that way. I was very no, I've seen that. very new. Mm-hmm. You know, I got my you know, you get a degree, mm-hmm. they tell you to go out and say the word, don't tell you how the hell to do it, right? <laughs> so I was very paper. I was very green yeah. and I was I was like, I'm gonna help my community, yeah. I'm gonna get up in there and I was putting my flies yeah. out and putting a commercial out and doing all this and doing stuff on Facebook mm-hmm. and they were like, Yeah, girl, I see you, I love it, I love it. But my, my account mm-hmm. wasn't reflecting, you know, the work that I was doing. And or the I, amount of people that was excited right, but didn't but show up. But as soon up. as Kathy Dan mm. said that I was the bomb, mm. then Shaniqua thought I was the bomb too. So like that was difficult true. for me. Yeah, pun intended. <laughs> what was your question, RJ? Because I want to come back what you started off earlier. Before I'm gonna come back to that. Well, we're talking about childhood trauma. Yes. Right. <laughs> we need another hour. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so in essence. We were 